The latest inflation report showed inflation cooling in the month of October, still pretty high, but let's dig into the implications for the Fed and for consumers. For that, we're joined by Steve Steinauer. He's the CEO of Huntington, which is a top 10 regional bank that operates in 11 states, primarily in the Midwest. Um, Steve, inflation um, numbers have been very high. Fed's been raising rates. There's been a lot of concern about a recession, but we do hear um, that the consumer's been doing pretty well. Is that what you're seeing at your bank, too? Yeah, absolutely. Consumer's still in very good shape. Frankly, many of the businesses are. But you can see the, the impact of these rising rates slowing down certain businesses, in particular home building and, and, uh, and a few other areas. What are the other areas? Well, um, uh, manufacturing generally would say their, their uh, sales forecasts year over year are a little less confident in. Uh, 23 than they were in 22. Some are down 10, 20 percent. So it's clearly having an impact. Are, are you seeing fewer businesses trying to take out loans as a result? No, actually, loan demand is still quite brisk, and part of that is because the inflation is driving the change in, in uh, cost of inventory, things like that. So uh, really, uh, uh, really a need for increased working capital. And because of supply chain constraints, uh, most are carrying more inventory. Again, mm -hmm. working capital. In terms of what you've seen at the bank, you've been there since 2009, is that right? I have, yes. So you've been there since the depth of the financial crisis. What, what, what does this time look like, not just from the economy historically, but also just from the, the health of banks as rates go up? Well, this is very, very different than 08, 09. First of all, the banks generally are in fabulous shape. It's not even comparable. Certainly we are, you know, record profitability quarter after quarter, very strong capital and liquidity ratios. And we've got strong momentum and pipelines going into next year. So we're very optimistic about uh, our position. And we are looking forward to helping our customers through uh, the dip if there is one. Mm -hmm. the, the Fed raising rates, that's good news for banks in general. You finally well, get... It, it is. It's the steepening of the curve that, that helps us. And, you know, rates were almost negative at one point, you know, zero. So there's a rebalancing that's going on. And this adjustment's happening very quickly. It's, it's challenging for consum some consumers. I think it's the right course. The Fed has to break the inflation cycle. You know, the complaint you'll hear from consumers, and this is not just you guys, this is for any bank out there, is, oh, my gosh, rates are going up. My credit card rates are going up. My interest rate that I'm getting in my checking account is not. When, when can they expect to see that go up? Well, uh, the interest rates are generally on money market savings and CDs, and those rates are starting to move because you've had successive 75-point increases now from the But Fed. nowhere near as fast as the Fed's raising rates. No, but we also had a lot of margin compression as rates declined. Um, we couldn't... Uh, uh, sustain that margin. So there's a rebalancing that's going on. I think it's about to level off. For, for an investor who's looking at the bank, what are those margin levels at this point? What's it, what's it translate into? Well, uh, banks are generally like a, a 310 to 350 margin. Historically, that would generally be the range for, for many of the banks. That's a, certainly the range for us. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that will allow us, uh, and we're already doing this, to reprice money market and other, other interest-bearing accounts. What's it mean as mortgage rates go up, just in terms of demand for mortgages, what people are seeing right now? What, what, housing is such a big, a big big part of the inflationary picture, but it takes a while for that stuff to generally slow down. Well, this, this has been because it's successive 75-point increases. The yield curves moved significantly. We, until yesterday, we saw mortgage rates, 30-year rates above 7%. That's a really significant change. It's 3.5% at the start of the year. So this doubling has had an impact. Mortgage applications are off about 40 percent this year and projected to decline again next year. So if and when we break the inflation curve and start coming back down, I think it'll open up housing. Yeah. Uh, Steve, you sound pretty positive about things. If there's one thing you worry about, what would it be? Well, I worry about uh, a sudden macro events. Um, uh, you know, I, we pay a lot of attention to what's going on uh, in, in Europe now with the Ukraine and, and Russia. There's, it doesn't take much to unspool markets, and, and we've had days when markets just weren't open already this year. So we're very focused on, on those macros. We think we're in the right course from Fed policy, break inflation, and then um, uh, put us back on, on a, a more natural track.